Hallelujah. I want to welcome you to one more episode of God's Word. And we are learning from God's Word about how the Lord is our inheritance. And this most probably will be the last episode of this series. Hallelujah. Please listen carefully because I am talking to you about the inheritance. What you are going to receive which will bless you while you are here in this world, in the land of the living, and also which will be with you unto eternal life, which will actually lead you to eternal life. Hallelujah. A knowledge of God, a relationship with God. Hallelujah. So you need to understand that this uh, uh, inheritance that you get is out of a gift of God. It is a sovereign grace of God that enables you, makes you a heir. See, you and I become a heir of God, a member of the household of God, not because we deserved it, you were holy, you did a lot of good things, but because Jesus Christ died for you. That is the only reason. Jesus Christ died, actually grace, the unmerited favor of God, is technically speaking the crucified Christ. Because the minute Jesus Christ died at the cross of Calvary, your status changed, your destiny changed. You who were once uh, a slave of sin and death, you belong to under the lordship of the devil. You were transformed, purchased. It's like if earlier there was slavery. Like you were paid, the price was paid and you were purchased and made the own of the new master. The new master was Jesus Christ. That is why you call him Lord. Lord, you know, landlord means the owner of the building. So similarly, when you call Jesus Lord, you are actually confessing, Lord, I belong to you. And that is confirmed because the word of God in several places calls you and me the purchased possession. My special treasure, hallelujah. Again, it confirms in the book of Peter, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, that you and I have been purchased from the aimless conduct received from our forefathers, not by perishable things like silver or gold, but by the blood of the Lamb of God, which is without blemish or spot or wrinkle. So it is the blood. Blood means life is in the blood. Leviticus 17, 11. Therefore, it is the very life of Jesus paid at the cross at Calvary so that God can make you his own by not by just the magic, but paying the price for your sin, which is death. Hallelujah. So, my dear brother, my sister, it is out of the sovereign grace of God. That is why 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 says very clearly, Hallelujah, it talks about Hallelujah. But Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 talks about you know, our inheritance is something which, you know, many people receive an inheritance, but that is not sufficient to take them through their life. They need to be then work, they need to do a lot of things, and this only helps a little. But as far as God is concerned, He, when you have Jesus as your inheritance, that is, the Lord is my inheritance, then the word of God very clearly says that not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. So, however much you work, you are still insufficient. There are so many areas. That is why people keep on working, working, working to achieve more, more, more. Because they are not, suf they are not sufficient. Maybe their needs, their, not, their wants, not needs. Their wants are much bigger. Are you with me? But when you are under the Lordship of Jesus, when you are Jesus as your inheritance, you are more than sufficient because you are having as inheritance the Lord of the Creator, who says very clearly that heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. And with confidence you can say, uh, as in uh, book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 19, my God shall supply, you should be able to tell yourself, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So there is no insufficiency of God because our God is a sufficient God. Again, his grace is more than sufficient. So if he is a sufficient God, then you need to understand his grace is more than sufficient for you. That is why 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and 10, I'll just read it out to you. It's all very simple. My dear brother, my dear, I want to tell you, the word of God is simple and pure. All that you need is an open heart. If you have, if you have an open heart, <laughs> hallelujah, you give yourself, allow the Lord to do an open heart surgery. As the word says in the book of Ezekiel, I will take away the heart of stone. I will give you a heart of flesh. I will deposit my Holy Spirit who will cause you to walk in my statutes and obey my judgments. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So, you just have an open heart and then God will teach you. 
Hallelujah. Everyone will be taught by God. That is why the book of John chapter 6 verse 45 says, everyone should be taught, as written in the scriptures, everyone shall be taught by God and is as such who are taught by the Father that come to Jesus. So open your hearts. Receive God's word. It says, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 and 10 says, And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. So I, like I told you earlier, the real grace is a crucified Christ. Because he died in your stead, your sins have been forgiven, you have been justified, you have been made a member of the household of God. Now the things that you see, the experience, you know, maybe a car, a house, a children, business, whatever it is, those are only the blessings that come to you because you are a son and a daughter of God. But who made you a son and a daughter of God? Not you, your works, your prayers. No, Jesus Christ's death made you a son and a daughter of God. The, the, the transfer which took place at the cross at Calvary, my sin was transferred to Jesus and his righteousness and life was transferred to me. That is what Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 says. Hallelujah. So, it says, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and, 8, 9 and 10 says, Hallelujah, for he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. So, my sufficiency comes from Jesus. My, in my weakness, I am more than sufficient because the sufficiency of God has come into my life. That could be in every area of your life. It could be in your health, it could be in your finances, it could be in your emotional state, it could be anything that you lack. Because when you are under the Lordship of Jesus, you lack nothing. That is why Psalm 23 verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I will lack nothing. Hallelujah. So my dear brother, my dear sister, it is time that you came under the Lordship of Jesus and you had Jesus as your inheritance. Then you will see your life is transformed. Hallelujah. Then again, you know, you need to understand that God should be your inheritance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, we all know that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. So desire that inheritance. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things that you need will be added unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to understand that today's need when the children of Israel were passing through the desert, every day God gave them manna. That day's requirement was given. And God was so thoughtful that on the Sabbath day they are not supposed to work. So on Friday he gave a double portion. Hallelujah. So that on Saturday they don't have to work to collect the manna. So you need to understand, our God plans out our life so beautifully that everything works for the best. That is why Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, and those who are called according to His purpose. Amen. So once you are acknowledged that, and once you are under the Lordship of Jesus, you don't have to worry about anything. Sometimes you say, what, will, what about tomorrow? Tomorrow, let's read the word about tomorrow. Let's read the word in the book of Matthew chapter 6 again. Hallelujah. 34. Hallelujah. So 33 we heard, but seek the, first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added in all these things we read earlier. It says do not worry about whatever it is. Now about tomorrow. So today okay fine. But tomorrow what will happen? Just read this. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So tomorrow will worry about how to provide for you. Are you with me? The people God arranges will worry about how to provide for you. Like, you know, Elijah the prophet was in the brook and there God was providing meat and bread. Are you with me? So, Elijah never knew how it was coming, but God was providing. It was a crow which was used by God. So, God, up to a particular point of time, God provided so that every day, tomorrow was prepared by God. Then, you know, when the brook dried up, God sent it to the widow. God provided there. So, my dear brother, my dear, circumstances may change, but the provision from God will never change. Are you with me? Because my God is a God who loves each one of us. Our God, not my God. Our God is a God who loves each one of us. Hallelujah. There is no limit to His love. So God very clearly says, do not be afraid, I am with you. Unto the end of the age. Hallelujah. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Then, when you say, my portion, God is my portion, you are actually talking of, God is a source of, of his happiness and blessings. Hallelujah. Every blessing comes, every spiritual blessing, a temporal blessing comes from Jesus. Such a person will be able to take a conscious decision as the psalmist in Psalm 27 verse 4. He said, one thing I have decided, that I will seek. 
to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of his countenance and to inquire in his temple. Hallelujah. That is why you need to understand, you must ensure this inheritance, the blessings that come from his inheritance. That is something which you have to take a conscious decision to ensure. Blessings are already there, but you have to ensure that it flows freely to you. And how do you do that? The book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 16 very clearly says, In that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments, his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. So today, all these things, if you obey, the Lord will bless you. And wherever you are, today we're not talking of lands and the canna and the land flowing with milk and honey, no. Wherever you are, God will bless you. Again, the word of God very clearly says, again in the book of Joshua, it's interesting to read, book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 and 9, it says like this, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it and a day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. For have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage, do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So your inheritance is following you. I mean, I would not say following, is in you. The inheritance is in you. And when it is in you, my dear brother, there are so many covenant promises in that chapter of Joshua itself. Verse 5 says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. My dear brother, this is the inheritance. Because you are carrying the inheritance. You are carrying the presence of God. Hallelujah. Desire that. Thirst for that presence of God. Hallelujah. And then you need to understand that that you will, you, are a, you will be a person who is content with all that the Lord has given. You will not be a person who is worried about acquiring things. You know, your heart is worried, your soul is worried, and your, you know, you're living a life of tension. No. That is why God's, God very, God's word very clearly says in the book of John chapter 14 verse 1, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Again, Psalm 23, verse 3 says, He restoreth my soul, that I may walk in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So how to be content? Hallelujah. If you turn with me to the book of Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. Hallelujah. It talks about a mantra, a, a, a magic, a, not a magic, if you're not magicians, a key to contentment. Hallelujah. And how it will such a great gain. It talks about, now godliness with contentment is great gain. First you have to have godliness, that is you must be aligned to God. You must be in tandem with God's will for you. Then, then it talks about contentment. So whatever the Lord has given, be content with that. I am not always suggesting that you should be lazy, oh this is my uh, this is my fate. No, you have to put work according to the ability that God has given you. You, do not, you should not be lazy. But you don't have to cheat people to become, you know, prosperous. God will prosper you. Hallelujah. You don't have to cut corners to be prosperous. God will bless you. He will honor you if you obey, if, you, if your life is fashioned within the parameters of God's law. He will bless you because when you obey God's word, you are actually honoring God. Are you with me? And when you obey God's word, you are actually loving God. Because the Gospel of John says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So a person who loves God, he will honor you, my dear brother, my dear sister. Hallelujah. So, you need to understand this contentment. It says very clearly, now godliness. You are going to become like God. I mean, not God, but godliness. So, something in the nature of God. Huh? Because God's word says in, very clearly in the book of uh, Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 that you might have the mind of Christ. So godliness with contentment. That is what God has given. I am not bothered about the big house that my neighbor has, the big car that my neighbor has, the amount of money that my neighbor has, the clothes, whatever it is. I am not bothered. I am satisfied with what God has given me. Because my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And so that contentment is so important. And then it says, it is great gain because you will have peace of mind. Today, many people, even very rich people, don't have peace. Once you possess the prince of peace, you will have peace because he resides in you. That is what Isaiah 9 says, that a child has been given to us 
and the government is upon his shoulder and he is, the five names are mentioned, he is, he is what? Wonderful, he is counsellor, he is everlasting father, he is mighty God, he is a prince of peace. So, he is a prince of peace. So, allow the prince of peace to rule and reign over your life, then there will be peace all around. Hallelujah. Just like you read in the book of, uh, um, about Samuel and also David in the end, he says, you know, there was peace all around. Because they were under the will of God. They were doing it according to God's will. Hallelujah. So the, the peace that comes from God is eternal. So you need to understand that the best inheritance you can imagine, hallelujah, does not come from possessing things, possession of things, but it comes from possessing God. The word of God says in the epistle of John that he who possesses the Son of God has life. Hallelujah. He who does not possess the Son of God has death. Hallelujah. I'm talking of a death in the spiritual realm, in the emotional realm, in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. So today possess that. That because nothing in this world, the riches, the honor, the friends, the popularity, your intellect, none of them are as valuable as the promises of God, as the inheritance of God, as a relationship with God. Because that relationship will enhance your life because you become God's very own. Are you with me? The book of John chapter 17 verse 3 says, Eternal life is to know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he sent. Hallelujah. Paul in the worldly realm should be a person who is totally at peace. When you read the word in the book of Philippians chapter 3. He had everything that a Jew, a, a, a Jewish man could even expect or aspire or dream. But he considered everything rubbish for the excellence of the knowledge of his Lord and Master Jesus Christ. And then he had peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Philippians 3, 8 says, Paul considered everything rubbish for the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ and that he may gain Christ. So when you give up something of the world, you gain something of Christ. Are you with me? It's like a pot. If it is full of the world, any amount of pouring into it will just spill out. I say if you empty yourself of the world and you open to the Spirit, the Spirit will fill you with the knowledge of the God, of the Lord. Again, Psalm 73 verse 25. It's interesting to read that. Hallelujah. Again, the book of Psalm chapter 73 verse 25 and 26 we we'll read. This is David, the king, having experienced the provision, the protection of God. Uh, knowing truly well that he was uh, a shepherd boy, now he is a king. Hallelujah. That the king of Israel. Hallelujah. He was able to understand and prioritize his life. And therefore he is able to say, Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon the earth that I desire besides you. So he is making a comparison. There is nobody in heaven, no saint, nobody I rely upon. Out of this world, I rely upon nobody. In heaven and here, I rely upon only you. In heaven, Jesus, the Father. In, on the earth, the Holy Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. All the triune God. Hallelujah. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So he is able to prioritize his life. He is able to say very clearly, I don't have anyone in heaven, no saint, no, no, no body. I have only Jesus Christ. Because the word of God says very clearly in uh, Hebrews 7.25, that he is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. And he always lives uh, to make intercession for them. Again, the book of Timothy says, there is no other mediator between God and man, but the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, he is able to understand that. In the, in the world also, I look to Jesus. If I don't look to Jesus, then I will be able, I will be blind to God, to vision of God. Like in the book of Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1, the year when Uziah, the veil of Uziah died, was removed. I say the prophet saw God. So today you need to depend on God. Hallelujah. You need to seek after God. You need to ask, ask for a revelation knowledge of God. That is the most important thing, my dear brother, my dear sister. And then the next verse, that is 26, says, My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. The flesh, you know, the things of the world may fail. My heart may fail. But the things might be so distressing. That there will be situations where I feel tired and, you know, restless. Hallelujah. Or even, in a way, hopeless. But it says, no. But, he says, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. God is the one who strengthens me. I will not fail. As Psalm 23 verse 3 says, He restoreth my soul, that I may walk in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Then he says, He is my portion. 
portion is inheritance. He's my inheritance. He will never leave me nor forsake me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So you need to understand that when God is your portion, you don't have to worry about anything else. Hallelujah, because we are hairs. You need to understand one thing very clearly. Hallelujah, we are hairs of God, not hairs of what God has. There's a lot of difference, sir. Being a hair of God and a hair of the things that he has. The things that he has are the things that you see. But the things that are invisible is God himself. So if you are having God as your inheritance, the things that you see will automatically come like we heard in the book of, or read in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things that you need will be added unto you. So you need to understand that we are a God, hair of not the things that belong to God, but of God himself. The relationship. I am a son and a daughter of God. That is the hairship. That is the relationship. That is the right that I want. That is the right that I desire. Not the things that belong to God. Because the whole thing is belong to God. Because God is the creator of everything. He says, hallelujah, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Hallelujah, the whole earth belongs to Jesus. Are you with me? So I don't want the things of the world. I don't want to become a hair to, 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 to possess worldly things. Many people come to Jesus for some worldly things. Hallelujah. They want to have a healing. They want to have some prosperity in their business. They want to have a house, a car, children do well or to have children. Those are all things of the world. Those are all passing away. So you do not, should not be desiring for what God has. That is the things of the world. But you must desire for God himself. So your inheritance should not be worth for, you must not be seeking the inheritance of the worldly things that you see, that the five senses can experience. But you must be thirsting for the inheritance of a knowledge of God, the inheritance of God himself. Hallelujah. This is something which you need to understand. Hallelujah. That's why Galatians 5.5 5 very clearly talks about the inheritance. My dear brother, my dear sister, God's word is to encourage us is to bless us beyond our wildest imagination. Hallelujah. Uh, Galatians 5.5 5 says, For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. This is the greatest thing, the hope of righteousness. The hope, hallelujah, of righteousness. Because how did you and I get righteousness? The word of God says in 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He who knew no sin was made sin for us, that you and I might become the righteousness of God in Him. This righteousness leads to eternal life. Hallelujah. That's why 1 Corinthians 1, 1 Corinthians 15, 19 says, If only in this world you have hope in Christ, you are of all men the most pitiable. So if only in possessing what God possesses here in this world, physical possessions, or you physical things like healing or deliverances, if that is your hope in Christ, or that is your only hope in Christ, then God says, you are of all men most pitiable because all those things which you hope for and you receive, let us say, will cease with your death. But there is some hope of eternal life which actually you are already in the kingdom. You are already in a relationship with the father and the son. Then that hope of eternal life is something which transcends from this worldly life into eternal life. So if you are only hoping for the things the temporal things, the word of God says you are a most pitiable person because you do not have revelation knowledge of the finished work at the cross at Calvary. The finished work at the cross at Calvary was not just, please understand, not just to heal you, not just to make you prosperous, not just to make you blessed, but the death of the cross at Calvary was most importantly that your sins must be forgiven, you must be justified and that you must be a heir of eternal life. That is the hope. That is the hope where you know, John 14, 3 says, I, uh, four, 2 says, I, in my father's house there are many mansions. And if it were not, oh, I, I would have told you. And I will come back one day to take you to, with you, take you to, uh, with me to be where I am. That is hope. Malayalatha Parayama beautifully says, Nyan ayiriki nodatha, ningalum ayiriki vayan, Nyan tirige vanna, ningalai enda kuda kutti kundu pogum. That is the hope. So anything in the worldly realm, if you're hoping, you are a pitiable person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, you need to understand, my dear brother, my dear sister, that the hope 
What is the hope? You must understand, hope is something which is for the glory. Book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 says, Christ in you is the hope of glory. The glory we heard earlier in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, that when he, you know, we are like seeing him like in a mirror, but then later on we will grow from glory unto glory. Hallelujah. The book of Ephes- uh, John, the epistle of John, 1, J- 1 John 3, 2, very clearly says that now we are children of God. And we do not know who, what we are now, but when he is revealed, we shall be like him. This is the hope. Hallelujah. This is something which is transcending from the worldly into the eternal. Again, Proverbs 13, 22 says, uh, the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 says, Hallelujah. In him, in Jesus, also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. And what is his inheritance? Verse 5 of Ephesians 1 says, Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So this is our inheritance. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Again, I want to read one more word to you. In the book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15, which reads as follows, And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. So, under the first covenant, transgressions, because man cannot live without disobeying the law even once. That is why 2 Corinthians chapter 3 talks about the commandment of God given, the Ten Commandments given on the tablets of stone as a ministry of death, as a ministry of condemnation. It's not that the commandments are bad, but we in our flesh are not able to obey that. So, it says, the transgressions are there. But the book of Colossians says that transgressions, the right handwriting offenses, has been crucified at the cross of Calvary with Jesus Christ because he has taken away our transgressions and put it on his own body and given us his righteousness. So he talks about an inheritance. For this reason, he is also the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. My dear brother, my sister, your eternal inheritance is eternal life. And that eternal life, the source is only Jesus Christ of Nazareth because he is the only one who paid the price for that inheritance. Possess him. Possess the inheritance. Because I want to end this uh, this episode this, uh, the, saying that, my dear brother, my sister, the most valuable, precious inheritance that you can ever have is the knowledge of and a relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Master, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Amen.